Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity two-player tutorial series. So our game is now complete. Functionally, it all works just the way we want to. We're going to add two more simple little things to our game just to enhance it a little bit. We're going to add a little bit of a snow falling effect to our game, and we're also going to add uh, the ability to um, have different levels within the game. You depending on if you even want to do that. You might want to keep it nice and simple and only have one level to mess around with uh, your friends or whatever. But we're going to add, first of all, a little bit of a snow falling effect to our level because it's a it's a wintry little world. Uh, we're going to add, very simply and very straightforward, we're going to use our particle of effects. So we're going to go to game object, particle system. We're going to make sure the rotation is set to zero. Um, we want them to be nice small little snowflakes. So uh, nope, we don't want to do 3D like that. We want to do start size 0.1. We don't want them all uh, floating around like this, so we're going to make some changes to that in a second. But we want to first of all change the shape from rather than being a cone, we want it to be a uh, yeah, we want it to be a box. Uh, we don't want it to be this tiny little box though, so we're going to uh, adjust the shape of it. Uh, there's no yeah, it is just box. I was just confusing myself for a second so we want to make it nice and wide like this we actually it's it magically by default um kind of was offset like this but this is actually what we want to happen we want it to be a little bit off to the side and uh, that kind of size actually is okay so what we're going to do is just make it just at the top of the screen up here now obviously we have all these bits of snow but we can't see them at the moment so let's turn on a gravity modifier uh, one is too much because it's just kind of falling straight down like that. That's no good to us. So we'll set it at say oh, 0.5 is too much. Point, point 0.1. There we go. That's a nice kind of snowfall effect. You can see it's falling down nicely there like that. Um, we also want it to be kind of drifting over to the side a bit. So we'll add some force over lifetime like this. And it'll be minus not minus one that's too much again minus point two point three that looks okay uh, but you can see now we're ending up at this little corner here isn't being shown so we're going to actually make our box a little bit wider again and over to the side here uh, actually much wider and uh, like that, there we go, perfect. So we could do with the snow being a little bit heavier. So we'll go to a mission and we'll set this up to be 20. Here we go, we've got a nice little bit of snow falling on in the, the background here. Um, we're gonna leave it on looping because we want it to be constantly going. The lifetime is fine. Um, the snow is falling a little bit low. So we can actually pull the lifetime down a bit to 4.5 say. Yeah, there we go. That's fine because now the snow is kind of, it's falling just below the ground. We don't need them being alive any longer than they need to be. So it's just a nice little effect in the background. We're also going to change the color of the background a bit. It's kind of this bright blue. Let's make it a little bit kind of uh, more Christmassy, more blue and a little bit darker like that. You could add a, an image into the background if you wanted to, but we just keep it nice and simple like that. So now if we play the game, we'll be able to see um, instead of just a static background you see the game starts and it starts snowing as soon as the game gets going which is kind of it's a fun little effect that's all it is it just add a little bit more to the game so that's nice and simple that's done so let's add the ability to add multiple levels into our game so to do this we'll obviously need more uh, than just the one scene so what i'm going to do is take our main scene here that we already have and we have this open we're going to go to file save scene as and we'll just say level two like that then now that we have two scenes we're going to go back to our menu screen and what we're going to do instead of just having start game and quit game um because of the nice and simple type of game it is we're not really going to have a hundred different levels or something like that so rather than having to create a whole different level system all we have to do is just add some um different buttons into the game and make them load from our script so what we'll do is 
here instead of uh, having our start game button I'm just gonna delete that from our world we're gonna create a new button UI button like this here and I'm gonna make it um, we're gonna pull the width of it down to be actually no we're gonna say put it at 60 and put the height at 60 as well so they're more of a kind of square button like this uh, I'm gonna change the label on it to just be um, play level 1 like this nice and simple I'm gonna drag this over to the side duplicate it to here like this and we'll have this one say play level 2 and then all we're going to do is go into our scripts folder because this is just the most basic and simple way to add multiple levels into your game and um, we're going to go into our menu script and we're just going to create uh, strings for the various levels that we have so um, we could create an array of strings but again we're not really going to have a crazy amount of different levels in this you're only going to want and generally speaking in any kind of game especially in a multiplayer game you're not going to want to have hundreds of levels um, because it'll just add confusion to people and it's harder to remember which levels you enjoy playing on for example so we're going to add a second string here a public string uh, that we'll just call level 2 and we're going to rename we're instead of using main game scene we're just going to use level 1 so we're going to instead of using start game as a function we're going to use start level 1 and we'll just, before we make any changes uh, in our scene manager here we're going to instead of main game scene we're just going to have level 1 like this what we're going to do then is just copy this paste it in there and just replace level 1 with level 2 and loading scene we we'll replace level 1 with level 2 and this is a very simple and kind of straightforward way of scripting this it's not the most uh, elegant scripting but the thing is um, your players aren't going to see your scripts this script works just as fine as using a variety of arrays or anything like that but because our, our game is nice and simple we don't need to have a bunch of arrays to store our levels in and stuff like that and to be able to load um, various different levels we keep it nice and straightforward and just um, use these simple functions to load our levels so you can have obviously start level one start level two start level three four five whatever and all you're doing is replacing the bit of string that loads each individual level so we have that change made now we save that go back into our game go to our canvas let that compile and I'm gonna open our the scenes we have saved here a second there we go now we have them open so that we can see the names of our scenes and we make sure that we use the right names so level one will just be main and level two will be level two now at the moment we actually didn't set these up to have any difference between them so we'll do a quick little change to level two in a second but we need to set up our buttons so uh, we're going to highlight this button and this button scroll down and we're going to once again add uh, a function for when we click on it drag our canvas into the slot there for the first button the function he's going to have is on our menu start level one the second button is going to have the function start level two so we'll save that let's load up level two and make a quick little change to it to make it uh, obvious that we're doing different levels actually just to make it nice and straightforward let's just uh, take these three move them up to there take this one move it down to here so it's just an obvious change as this little this little guy is kind of floating around there all over the place and this thing is a little bit off as well so we'll just move them there like that it's just obviously you'd probably want to put a little bit more thought into your level designs than this but this is just to show us how it's working so we'll save that go back to our menu screen hit play and now we have level one is our standard level that we created we're going to hit escape to go back level two 
Oh, level two couldn't be loaded because of course, uh, as we covered in the previous video, we need to actually add them to the build settings before we do anything like that. So we'll just click and drag our level two in there, hit the X button and we'll hit play again. And this time it should actually run for us just fine. It's one of the awkward quirks of Unity that it won't load a scene unless it's been added to it, but that's that's okay. It's kind of to prevent uh, players doing some stuff that they shouldn't do. But there you go. You can see it um, repositioned everything. We're in we're in level two now, so it's a completely different layout. And basically, it's up to you to design your own levels and see which way is fun. And that's pretty much everything that we've got going on in our game. It's all kind of finished. It's all working fine. So. The only thing left to do is go to our build settings. Uh, before we build the game, we want to go to our player settings here and make sure that uh, our company name is whatever you are. I'm James Doyle. We Our product name is our snowball fight. You can replace the icon with whatever you want. Uh, let's actually use, uh, oh no, we can't use, we can use the whole sprite sheet if we want, but uh, we won't do that. But you can replace that with whatever you want and you can change any of these other settings um, mess around with them yourself and you'll see the impact that they have uh, but for now what we can do is hit our build button we're going to build this game I'm going to create a new folder here called builds uh, we're going to say snowball fight we're going to let this build this will take a minute or two to build the game for us and then we'll have uh, a file that we can send you can send the game to anyone you want you'll have your full game here to be able to play and um, have fun uh, on Christmas. So I'm going to let this build and we'll come back and play the game itself. Okay, and now that our game is finished building, we can we have it as a as an exe file. You want to make sure when you um, if you're giving this game to anyone or sharing the game anywhere, you have to include both of these things. It's not just the exe file; you need to include the data folder at the same time otherwise the game just won't work so let's just run the game here to make sure it all works perfectly fine and um, we're going to play it in full screen here and give it a second we load into the menu as i said because we put that as the first scene in the game and now we have our little two-player game fully working just the way we want it to we can throw our snowballs we can win our game and um, and that's basically it. That's all we need. That's our, our two-player game all finished. Thanks for watching this series. Uh, if you're interested in other game developments, we have other games uh, tutorial series on the channel and lots more coming in the very near future too. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all very soon.